gonna go ahead and start it up here. Yeah, for anybody just joining though, we are doing the PlayStation 2 Gauntlet. It is my quest to collect and stream every North American PlayStation 2 game that I can stream, at least. We have been making some progress on it. We are currently sitting at, oh, let me pull my list here. Uh, nearly 1% of the collection streamed and I've collected mm, about 4.18%. 4 so still got a long way to go, but we are getting there and it's been a lot of fun so far. Played a lot of games that I probably wouldn't have played otherwise. Found a fair few that I really ended up enjoying. And yeah, all in all, just having a good time, you know? Most of the games we're just trying out, but there are a few here and there that we are finishing. Right now, we've been working on Lord of the Rings collection, or I'm sorry, Lord of the Rings The Third Age, not collection. And then after that, I don't know exactly what game we're going to play to completion, but I'm sure it will be something. Because, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Want to play as much of them as possible. Nate says, heck, I still think they rank up there to this day only with more... Only one with more of the Fallout games and Elder Scrolls. Yeah, I mean, same, probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. There are certainly games that I've put more time in than the Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter games and whatnot, but that's because they're relatively short games, you know? But they are still some of my favorite games, though. Elder Scrolls and, and Fallout series are definitely up there in terms of just raw hours, way up there. And then Kingdom Hearts is pretty far up there as well, but that's because I've replayed those games a, a few times. So even though they aren't super long games in and of themselves, I've played each one of them, <laughs> you know, two, three, four times. So <laughs> more times than is really necessary, that's for sure. Constantly replayed all of them. I can't blame you for that, you. that, <laughs> honestly. Let's turn the game up just a little bit. Seems a little quiet, this one. There we are. Yeah, I hope everybody's excited for Ratchet and the Clank. Ratchet and the Clank. Why do I keep saying that, though? Ratchet and Clank. Has anybody out here there watched the movie or anything like that? I did. I watched it probably about a month ago, give or take. It was surprisingly decent. Not one of my favorite movies or anything like that, but I had a good time with it. The animation was excellent. The storyline and everything was, yeah, you know, so-so. Yes, it's great. You loved it, Nate? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree it was pretty decent. I, it, again, not one of my favorite movies or anything, but as far as video game movies go, oh, it's up there. I mean, you have a bunch of really bad video game movies, you know? Like, I'm sorry, but the Mortal Kombat movies, for instance, I haven't seen the new one. To be fair to any Mortal Kombat movie lovers or whatever, <laughs> I haven't seen the new one. So I don't really know what that one's like. Okay, well, I have seen a bit of the new one, but uh, somebody was distracting me during that movie. Cough, cough, Mr. Noodle Cough. So I didn't get to actually finish it or anything or really even know what happened. But I saw bits and pieces. It seemed okay. But the original one's uh, not so great. Ah, oh, the new Sonic movie, Nate. Yeah, the new Sonic movie was excellent. That was actually pretty good. One of the only movies I've seen in theaters recently. But it was a lot of fun. I actually ended up picking that one up, too. I saw it on Black Friday when I was shopping not too long ago. And uh, part of one of the sales, so I decided to go ahead and pick it up. Because, yeah, it's surprisingly decent. All right, so this is Ratchet and Clank. For anybody that doesn't know, Ratchet and Clank is an action platformer with some shooting elements. And that's about it. That's all you need to know. That's Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Y'all should try it out sometime. Uh, first thing we need to do, though, is see if we can go into options and change our camera controls to reversed. Okay. Uh, we also need to change our horizontal controls to reversed, apparently. Apparently, I just want everything reversed. We'll try fast. Fast camera speed. That feels pretty decent. I can never decide with the up and down if I want it reversed or not. I am an invert player with the controller, but sometimes, some games it just feels weird to me for some reason. Now, first person shooters have to be inverted. I cannot play them otherwise. Hell, I can hardly play them as it is, especially with a, a controller. Definitely a keyboard and mouse player. 
But with like third person games, I never know how I want it. If I want it to be inverted or if I just want it to be standard. I always get confused on which one uh, feels better to me, you know? <laughs> All right, it looks like I need to shift my game down just a tiny bit here. Ah, uh, no, okay, I guess it was okay. Ah, oh, it's buffering for you as well, Mr. Noodle. I'm sorry. It seems like the local cellular connection isn't too great. Because Nate's having the same problem. He had to put it on audio-only mode to really be able to see what was going on. Or to hear what was going on, I guess. Yeah, I upped the stream quality a little while back. Not to anything extreme, you know. Just the, the standard 6,000 kilobits a second. But that may be leading to some of the problems you guys are having. And again, sadly, I was not picked for the transcoder today. The transcoder gods have not blessed me. So, stuck at 1080p source quality. I apologize for you cell phone users. Hopefully, though, y'all can still hear okay. Yeah, what else have you guys been playing? You been playing anything recently, Nate? Outside of the PlayStation 2 Gauntlet, I haven't had time to play much of anything, to be honest with you. I was playing Skyrim, and I've been wanting to play more Skyrim, but sadly, I just haven't had much time to play any of it. There was another game that I was really wanting to play the other day. I can't even remember what it was now, though. Oh, no, wait. I did play a little bit of uh, Phasmophobia. And what was the other game that I played with my with a uh, couple friends? Oh, uh, Worms. Worms WMD. Weapons of Mass Destruction. A lot of fun. A lot of fun, that is. I've never lost a... I've lost individual matches, but never lost a tournament, because we usually do, like, first to two wins or whatever. I've never lost, and I, I'm pretty sure it makes, makes them mad every time I play with them, because... <laughs> Most of the time, honestly, I just get lucky, to, to be honest. I'm not, like, that good at the game or anything like that. And it's definitely been close. There's been a couple extremely close calls that I'm surprised I ended up being able to pull out of the bag. But, yeah. And then our, our poor friend Demon Lord. I'm not sure if he's ever won a match. <laughs> Nate's been playing Midnight Club in the Fable series. Very nice, man. I still need to play Fable at some point. I have it, of course, for PC. The first one. The second one they never released for PC, though, which is a little bit sad. I'll have to get a uh, original Xbox or 360 or something to try that one out. And then I have Fable 3 on PC as well. I'm pretty, sh well, I'm pretty sure I own it, at least. I know they definitely made it for PC. Okay, how do we crouch? There it is. Couldn't remember how to crouch and throw. Because, of course, like I said, there are some shooter-esque elements, right? You got your different bombs and, and, and guns and things that you can collect so that you don't keep taking damage like I'm doing right now. If anybody's wondering why I'm collecting all these nuts and bolts, that's your currency. In this game, you use that to buy upgrades, more ammunition, all different kinds of things like that. It says it's backwards compatible on the Xbox One. Very nice. Yeah, like I said, uh, I'll probably if I ever do pick up an Xbox, that'd be one of the first games that I'd wanna I'd wanna grab is Fable 2. Cause I've been very interested to play the games in that series, but I've never actually gotten to, you know. And again, Fable 1 and 3 are both on PC, so that's no problem. I can play those easily enough, but but two I'm kinda stuck with. Or stuck stuck without, I guess, is more like it. Yeah, so with these guys here, we can just kind of throw a bomb at them and kill them easily enough, or we can just kind of crouch and throw our wrench at them. A couple wrench hits will take them out real, real nice as well. The bombs, though, obviously do a bit of a better job. They pack a bit more punch than, than just hitting them with a wrench does. <laughs> Man, I don't know how far anybody else has ever gotten into this game outside of myself or Nate, I'm sure, since he said that he's played a fair bit of it. But the game gets a bit wacky the farther you go along. There's some wacky weapons and situations. And the developers always kind of have some fun with the names of the games and whatnot, too. Like, this one's just called Ratchet and Clank. But then 
later on in the series they have stuff like up your arsenal and stuff like that that's uh <laughs> like i said they just like to have a bit of fun with it a l little bit of childish humor maybe but not complaining interesting Yay! you're quite handy with your wrench you bet i built that ship with it hmm. currently i'm in search of someone who could be of assistance in saving the solar system do you know where i might find that fellow well, he's on the radio every week. Other than that, no. Hey, what's with all this save the solar system stuff anyway? Hello, citizens of... Hello, citizens. My race, the Blog, have a small problem. Our planet has become so polluted, overpopulated, and poisonous that we are no longer able to dwell here. But I, Chairman Dreg, have a solution. We are constructing a pristine new world using the choicest planetary components available. So, what does this mean to you, you might ask? Using highly sophisticated technology, which you couldn't possibly understand, we will be extracting a large portion of your planet and adding it to our new one. Unfortunately, this change in mass will cause your planet to spin out of control and drift into the sun where it will explode into a flaming ball of gas. But, of course, sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. Cut! And if you don't like it, you can take your whiny, sniveling, snot-nosed populations, form a line behind me, and kiss my... We're still on? <laughs> well, turn it off, you idiot! It's a lot, lot of fun little humor here. The Ratchet and Clank games. The people on those planets are hosed. Well, good luck getting Captain Quark to help you. Actually, you could help me. If you could use your ship to take me to the coordinates contained in this info box, I might be able to gather further information there. Even if I wanted to, I can't. I'm missing a crucial component of the ship. The robotic ignition system. How did you know that? I talking, talking, talking. Robotic ignition systems. My programming allows me to start any ship I choose. So I agree to take you to this wherever it is, and you get my ship started for me. That is what I'm proposing. All right. They done now. Okay. <laughs> Nate says it's truly one of your favorites. They're on your list of second most played games, especially Fable Two. A lot of people hate it on Fable Three, but you love the changes they did. I was going to ask which one your favorite was. You kind of answered it for me there, though. Take care of it. Whoa, this is great. So that's where I've been stuck this whole time. Please return your appendages to the steering mechanism, sir. Huh? Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, and by the way, you can stop calling me, sir. The name's Ratchet. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. You got a name? My serial number is B54296. Oops. I'll just call you Clank for short. Hang on. Yeah, so I'm guessing Fable 2 is your favorite, though? So, you see, it would be most beneficial if your citizens were not in the city when my workers begin removing it. Preposterous! I will not stand for this. Unfortunately, you have no choice in the matter. Let's just see what Captain Quark has to say about that, my good man. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny. Captain Quark could dispatch you without even breaking a sweat, you, you, you need. You have now officially worn out your welcome and my patience. This is your last chance. Stop this madness now! Okay, wait. You're right. I will withdraw my troops. Really? No! He's all yours, gentlemen. Try not to leave any marks. So two is your favorite because it's the one you played first in the series. Are the games not like, it's not one story, just kind of told throughout the three games? Like each one has its own unique story then? I know they're set like in the same universe, but they are separate, right? Your brother had it and you borrowed every chance you got until you got your own copy. Nice. Yeah, that's what, it's kind of how it was for like Jack and Daxter for me, for instance. Perhaps we could procure a ship from one of the inhabitants. If there are any left. Like I said, I never owned Jack and Daxter growing up, though I did own Ratchet and Clank and Sly Cooper, hence why I played those ones a lot more than Jack and Daxter, at least growing up. But then I got Jack and Daxter collection for the PS3 or 4, whatever it was, 
And I just, yeah, I fell in love. It's the only game I've platinum on the PS... Uh, well, on PlayStation consoles in general. Which is pretty surprising, considering my love of, you know, uh, God of War and Kingdom Hearts and whatnot. But Jack and Daxter was just very reasonable with its trophies. Like, you didn't have to do anything ridiculous to collect them. You just, you beat the game and, and got all of the collectibles in the game, and that's all you had to do. There was no, like, online elements, there was no kill six million of these things or anything crazy like that. It was just, hey, play the game. Did you 100% the game? Cool, you got a, you got a platinum. Whereas, like, Kingdom Hearts, for instance, I've 100 percented the main part of the game, but the gummy shit missions just get to me, man. I can't, <laughs> I can't get into them. <laughs> Not that much, at least, so... I've never, uh, I never got the Platinum on it there. The overall lore, all of them are connected. You don't know why it's double messaging? Uh, it's not showing up double for me, so you should be good. Yeah, it's just showing up one message each time you send something to me, so... I think you're alright, man. Yeah, maybe something with your, your connection issues that you that you're having. Maybe it's showing too because of that, I don't know. But yeah, no worries. No problems on this end. Yeah, I really hope that like if they do a remaster of two or something like that and bring it to PC, that would be amazing. Just because I have no idea when it'll be that I finally end up picking up an Xbox console. Well actually, to be fair, I do actually own a couple Xbox 360s. They just need some work done on them to get them working again, basically. So once I get one of them fixed, I, I could just play Fable 2 on there if I ever wanted to. Ooh. Which is something maybe I'll do. Uh. How many of the Ratchet and Clank games have you played, Nate? Just the... Just the first one, or have you ever played, like, the second, third, etc., etc.? The first one's the only one that I've played through to completion. Well, no, that I don't think that's true, actually. I'm pretty sure I've played the second and maybe the third one to completion. I remember that I played more than one of them, at least when I was a kid. I just don't remember how far I got in the other ones. The first one, I, I've definitely beaten, for sure. But it was so long ago since I played through them that I don't remember all of them that I've done. It's so weird. I just played this, like I mentioned before, for the podcast not too long ago. And in my time playing it for that, I unlocked a lot more of the new movement abilities and stuff like that. So going back now to not having any of the, the hover, the hover, the hover, or anything like that, just feels really weird. Fable 2 had the best DLC, and you played each that was on PS2, but never beat any of them. Didn't have a memory card for the longest time. Oh, yeah, you've mentioned that before. That sucks, man. Played all of them, but never got to beat them. At least on the PS2. That's insane. Dad blasted! <laughs> look, plumber's crack. What did you just say? I said, look, the plumber's back. All right, wise guy. Shouldn't you be on one of them escape transports? Escape transports? Newsflash, giant robots attacking. The escape transports are taking all the rich folks off this goddarn planet. So why aren't you on one? Socioeconomic disparity. What? He hasn't got enough votes. Working people have to wait for Captain Quark to save us. Well, got anything worth a lot of bolts? I got this thing. Shows two weirdos ditching their ship. It's got coordinates to a desert planet, too. An infobot. Ratchet, we could use that. 500 bolts. Thankfully, we've been collecting all the boats that we can find, so... We'll take it. Geronimo! <laughs> and then he just penguins the down the pipe? sewer pipe. Mayday, Mayday! This is the solar ship Radical. We seem to be under attack from the planet's surface. Relax, kid. It looks like some sort of fireworks display. Probably in your honor. Whoa! That was close! Ah! Pipe down, I can't concentrate. Oh, we've been hit! Uh, an unexpected detour. When we land, I'll see if I can scare up an exhibition for you. We're not gonna live that long! Kid, let's am scream! Eject! Eject! Wow, sucks to suck, man. Getting hit like that. Did you see that guy on the left? That was Skid McMarks. Does he know Captain Quark? I doubt it. He's Skid a pro McMarks, hmm. Always going off about how cool he is. 
Looks like he's in trouble. I'll say. I've never seen him look so freaked out. Gadgetron Infobots give and it says yeah, so someone planets. Let me turn now that down that you a bit. Have the for planet Iridia, you'll need to find Yeah, so someone turned off the power or if, or if it went off, which happened a lot where you lived, you lost all your progress. That's that is rough, man. I kind of feel your pain cuz when I first got, we're going to turn subtitles on by the way. When I first got a PS2, I my mom brought it home with the Sly Cooper game. It's a story I've told before, but she didn't know that you need a memory card, which is fair. We were mostly a Nintendo household up until that point. My brothers had a PlayStation 1, but we didn't have a whole lot of games for it or anything. Whereas, like, I, growing up, just had a, an original Nintendo and then would rent, like, a N64 and whatnot. Eventually, I got a... Oh, what's it called? A, uh... Sega Genesis as well, but with all the cartridge-based games, there either wasn't any save files, right, you just use passwords, or the game saved directly on the cartridge. So, she had no idea that she really needed a memory card, so she just brought me home Sly Cooper and the PS2 itself, and, uh, yeah, I played it for a little bit, and then realized that there was no way for me to save the game, and, uh, well, I told her about the problem, and it wasn't too long after that, I don't remember how long exactly or anything, but it wasn't too long after that that she brought me home a memory card so i kind of feel your your pain there said heck when you were trying to beat guitar hero 2 the system was hot enough you couldn't make us you could make us more on it <laughs> oh man that's crazy at least with the guitar hero games they they always had the cheats if you had internet to look them up or whatever you could look up the cheats on how to unlock all songs and stuff like that because while i have beaten all of the guitar hero games before we still use the cheats a fair bit because anytime you'd go to a friend's house if they didn't have them all unlocked or if you just you know didn't feel like completely playing through the story mode it was just a quick and easy way to unlock all the songs we used to have it memorized on most of them definitely don't anymore but you know <laughs> that's why i'm glad they added the quick play which is all the songs unlocked automatically in the newer games that's a huge help said you looked up to and trip tip and trick magazines in the store and wrote that junk down yeah <laughs> i mean that was another way to do it we would uh if we were at like a family member's house with a internet connection we would use that and write it down or at like school or the library or something like that because yeah we didn't have internet either growing up i do remember back when aol was all the rage we tried to hook that up at one point but i was young i don't remember how it would exactly probably like oh i don't know eight years old or something like that at most and, like, I explained to my mom that it was possible to hook it up to the internet. You just had to hook it up to a phone line or whatever. And then we put in one of those AOL discs, and I was too young to figure it out. But I tried, man. I tried so hard to figure it out because, you know, they would always advertise, like, hey, get this much free internet service with this AOL disc or whatever. And so, you know, I tried. I, I poured my little heart and soul into it and just completely failed, sadly. <laughs> I must have tried for hours and then just never got the damn thing working. And so we gave up. And then, uh, oh wow, probably wasn't until I was like 14 or something that I actually had internet access at my house. Maybe a little bit younger, might have been 13. But even then, it was just dial-up internet, right? So it was extremely slow internet. But it was good enough for me to play RuneScape on and to look up guides and stuff on uh, GameFAQs.com. So... You know, <laughs> take what I can get there. Yeah, you did the same, Nate. Yeah, yep, yep. Thankfully, I didn't have to deal with dial-up for too long. It was only for a couple years before my... I was living with my grandpa growing up, for the most part. So uh, he ended up getting Comcast. You know, proper, proper cable-based internet solution. Not too long after that. And then uh, never turned back, man. Once I got a taste of the, the good stuff, it just... <laughs> Couldn't stop. Not that Comcast is the best company in the world out there or anything, but you know what? It was a hell of a lot better than Net10 or whatever dial-up internet that we were using. 
spend literally all day waiting for a, a single video to load on YouTube and stuff like that. Just insane. You just gotta put that shit on pause and then wait for the buffering, like... <laughs> Comcast not the best, but they have the best speeds in a lot of areas. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's very true. That's very true where we live, right? Of course, where we live, there's not really any other options, even unless you're willing to take one of those satellite providers or something. And I mean, I don't know about where any of uh, anyone else out there lives, but the internet providers, the satellite internet providers that we have in our area are just junk, man. The, the speeds and latency are always really, well, speed's really low, latency really high. And then a lot of them have hard data caps and stuff like that that are just impossible. I remember somebody that I knew was using one of these satellite internet providers because they had no other option where they lived. And they had like a 20 gig a month limit for daytime and then another 20 gigs for night per month. And that was it. So after the first, you know, couple of days of the month, they, they were basically out of internet. It would still technically work. But it would be so slow that it was essentially unusable. It's actually uh, really bad. Alright, sadly our pre-roll ad just got disabled. Or re-enabled, I guess, technically. Uh, we could take a break here, but I think we're going to play a little bit longer. Although, you know what, I think this is a good spot to take a quick break. We'll get up and stretch for a moment. Let an ad play out to get those pre-roll ads disabled while we're still relatively early in the stream. And I'll just buy this weapon and, and yeah, take a quick break. Nate says you had one like that. It was Frontier or something. Yeah, I, I, I've i never tried any of the other ones. After getting Comcast, I, I never went back to any of the other ones for our area personally. You also heard rumors though that AT&T Fiber is trying to get in around here. That would be nice, honestly. Like, I would probably give it a try at least, you know, see if it's any good. I'm always a little iffy with AT&T internet, but if it's true, like, decent fiber, I, I would I would try it out. Worst case scenario, it doesn't end up being any better than what I have. Could always switch back or whatever. Got the new gun. We're not going to mess around with it too much until the ad break finishes up. Don't want anybody to miss anything. But now we have two different weapons. We got the Pyro Sitter. Pyrocitor? I have no idea how to say that. But we got that now, so we can catch things on fire. And then, of course, the classic bomb glove that we had already. But yeah, see, so that's what you use your nuts and bolts for. Just buying a bunch of different weapons, upgrades, ammo, stuff like that. I, d I don't really know why you would buy ammo most of the time, right? It's pretty rare that I ever feel the need to buy <laughs> ammo. Because you find it all over the place, just in the world. So I don't really see the point in buying it. Unless, uh, I mean, I guess maybe if you're right before a boss or something like that, you happen to know and, and you're out of ammo. I don't know. You had Frontier at your mom's house. Oof. Was it decent, at least, for you? Or or was it was it pretty rough? Because, I mean, I've heard some not-so-great things about Frontier, but, like I said, I've never personally tried out their service. I don't think they're available here where I live. I know they have some places around here where it is, but... Yeah, not not here at my house. So if you if they get AT&T fiber in here, like there are in other areas, solid speed, a decent price. Yeah, well, I mean, if you try it out or know anybody else that tries it out, let me know. And uh, if we end up getting it in our area, and I'll I'll definitely give it a shot if I hear good things about it. Because my biggest issue with Comcast, don't get me wrong, Comcast has been good to me personally. I haven't had nearly as many trouble with it as a lot of people have. My only problem with it is the upload speeds are, are pretty low, right? I have one of their higher speed plans, not the absolute highest that I can get in the area, but one of the higher tiers. It's, uh, if I remember correctly, 800 some megabits a second is what I is what I pay for. The problem with it is that the upload speeds are just trash on most Comcast tiers. Even the gig tier, if I remember correctly, is only like 20 megabits a second upload, give or take. Which just, just isn't amazing. Whoa, cheered a thousand. Thank you so much, Why Me. You love Ratchet and Clank? Dude, one of my favorites. One of my all-time favorite games on the PS2, or just in general, even, to be honest with you. 
I'm excited to be playing and play through the other ones eventually on the PS2 gauntlet here. Oh, also, you can see the, the boss up there now, the, the stream boss. Uh, y Meat's now taking the spot, taking us up to 325 health for the new one. I need to pay a little bit more attention to these dudes or they are going to murder me. But yeah, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Have you played all of the PS2 ones or, or the newer ones or anything like that? Or Because I've only really played the PS2 ones, to be honest with you. And I played a little bit of the PS3 HD remake or whatever as well. But I mean, they're just the, the same thing. Just, you know, HD-ified. <laughs> It's no real uh, differences there. Just the PS2 ones, yeah. I mean, that's when they were at their heyday. They were at their most popular, for sure, on the PS2. And then there for a while, they were relegated to the download titles instead of, like, full physical releases on the PS2. So, they went through a bit of a rough patch. I believe the games were still pretty good from what I've heard, though. Just, you know, not as popular as they were once upon a time. I really want to play the new one, Rift Apart. It's one of the main reasons why I want to get a PlayStation 5, to be honest. Because I really want to play Rift Apart. It looks so good, man. But uh, PlayStation 5 exclusive, so... Consider getting a PlayStation just to play them because you love them. Yeah, well, hey, um, you still have your PC, right, Why me? Because what you can do, they have uh, PlayStation Now is something that you can get... And it's like a streaming service from Sony where you can stream a bunch of different games. And uh, you can play them on a PlayStation, of course, but you can also play them on a PC with a Xbox or, or PlayStation 4 controller. And uh, yeah, it's like 10 bucks a month or something like that. But they have a bunch of the Ratchet & Clank games on there. I'm actually currently subscribed, so I can look up for you later and see what all Ratchet & Clank games are available before you drop the money on it if you want. But yeah, the only downside, of course, being it's streaming, so you do have to have an internet connection and every once in a while you make it a bit of a dropout on the connection or something like that but but yeah pretty decent so i was playing bloodborne on it for a little bit and it was running pretty decent the only reason why i stopped playing it on playstation now was because there was just a tiny bit of latency I don't think it would be so bad for, like, a platformer game, but Bloodborne being, like, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, as I'm sure you know, is uh, a little bit more of a precision title. And I, I felt like I was missing some dodges and hits that I shouldn't have been. And uh, I'm sure a big part of that was just because, you know, I'm bad at the game. But also, <laughs> the the lag certainly wasn't ha helping, I mean. $10 is a lot cheaper than a $506 dollars system. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure, that's why I suggested it, like, and then if you try it out and you don't end up liking it or whatever, again, it's only, you know, $10 or whatever, so you can always cancel your subscription for the next month, and then you're only out 10 bucks, not out $500, $600 plus the cost of the game. So it's really not a bad deal, and they have a crap ton of games on there, too, not just first-party Sony stuff like Ratchet and Clank, but... Um, a bunch of the Resident Evil games, too. I don't know if you like those, but a bunch of Resident Evil games on there. Uh, some older PlayStation 2 games. I think Red Dead Redemption's on there, if I remember correctly. All kinds of stuff. It's good value for the money, in my opinion. It's a lot like uh, Xbox Game Pass, but... But, you know, with Sony stuff. And admittedly, not quite as many, like, first-party titles. Mercenaries, torturers, or, assassins. I, I'll tell you anything. Here, take my info bot. It's all I've got left. Sir, we're not assassins. Hold on. Let's see what he's got. I love all the little cutscenes and stuff. They're always ridiculous, especially the ones with Captain Quark. Has this ever happened to you? Hi, I'm Captain Quark. And believe me, there's nothing worse than stirring down a Blargy and Snaggle Beast from the inside, and knowing your equipment isn't functioning properly. That's why I come to Al's Robo Shack for all my electronic needs. Al has been the exclusive repair shop for my super electro gadgets since I was knee high to a sand mouse. If Al can't fix it, it's not broke. Right, Al? Ah. 
You said it, pal. So if you're fighting crime or just fighting grime, <laughs> come to Al's RoboShack in Metropolis for all your robotic repairs. Al's RoboShack, it's quarktastic. Guess we have to go to Al's RoboShack now, eh? Do you know what this means? Yeah. Captain Quark is really sold out. No, it means Captain Quark is on Metropolis. We could tell him about this invasion. If we had a ship. <laughs> what? Uh, a, a ship? What? You're not going to torture me? Well, as planetary chairman, and I could arrange for you to borrow our courier ship. Cool. You can count on us, sir. Right. Thank you, your chairman shipliness. Now yeah. Have two new planets. Fat Princess actually sounds familiar to me. I'm pretty sure that was what a download title on the PS3, I think. Turn that back down a little bit now that the cutscenes are over. Um, but what was I saying? Oh yeah, no, I was just saying about PlayStation Now. So they it has a bunch of first-party titles. I guess that wasn't quite correct of me to say. But it's like uh, Xbox Game Pass tends to get a bunch of brand new games that have just come out, like day one releases on there and whatnot. PlayStation Now doesn't tend to do that as much as what I meant. Most of their titles, while a lot of them are first-party Sony stuff, a lot of them are, you know, a year or two old or whatever. But, Fat Princess. I don't remember seeing that one on the list the last time I looked through it, but, like I said, if you can't find a list, I'm happy to look for you, because I've already subscribed, so... Once the stream's over, I can, I can take a look for sure. Shoot you a message on Discord or something. And yeah, with only... 10 bucks, not bad at all. Fat Princess, I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure, I don't remember I've ever actually playing that one, but I'm positive I've seen it on PlayStation Network before. And just never really gave it a chance. But uh, maybe I'll have to. I still have my PS3 over here. So I'll have to hook it up one of these days or something if it's not on PlayStation now. Give it a shot. Top-down fighting game where you attack the enemy castle. I'm sure I'd, I'm sure I'd dig it. All right, so we want to go to. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter, but we can come back to Iridia at some point. We'll just go straight to the Metropolis, I think, to go to Al's Roboshat, because if I remember correctly, going here will get us one of the upgrades. And getting that upgrade will allow us to explore a little bit better. So we'll just go there first, and then we can always come back to the other one if we want. Tiny Man, I can't wait. Whenever I finally do end up getting a PlayStation 5, that's going to be one of the first games I play. I may end up streaming it, too, if, if people want to see it, but... The Rift Apart, the new Ratchet and Clank game. That's probably the game I'm most hyped for on PlayStation 5. It's like Final Fantasy VII Integrade. Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade. I'm really excited for that one too, but I've already played, you know, 90% of that content on the PlayStation 4 with the first iteration of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. But Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart being an exclusive and watching all the trailers for it and everything leading up to the PlayStation 5 release just had me super hyped and I've never gotten to play it and it, it angers me <laughs> but getting a hold of a PlayStation 5 has just been impossible basically so yeah someday someday hopefully tomorrow actually if I'm lucky there's supposed to be Walmart's getting some for Black Friday not in stores but online so me and my girlfriend both are going to each of us be on our phones gonna <laughs> gonna try to get one of them it's the dream how many okay 2200 so we need 2500 to unlock the next weapon this here i don't remember if we can do this area yet to the Captain Quark fitness course. If you're strong enough, we might need one of the upgrades before we can do this part here my fitness challenge you will receive a reward from my head trainer simply make your way to the third island to complete the course good luck quark enterprises is not responsible for sprains broken bones snap tendons bruised egos or accidental death incurred while taking the challenge Excuse me, Captain, but we have more pressing issues. We urgently need your assistance. Clank? 
Yes? Do you notice anything unusual about Captain Quark? Well, I find the fact that he has a spring where his leg should be to be quite puzzling. And why do you think that is? Possibly an injury incurred while battling evil? This isn't the real Captain Quark, you numbskull. It's a robot. Oh. I love the fact that the robot, you know, Clank, can't tell that this isn't the real Captain Quark, or at least couldn't tell <laughs> that this isn't the real Captain Quark. Needed somebody to tell him. I love all the cute little details in this game, man. Or just in the Ratchet and Clank series in general. They're just fun, you know? That's the thing. It's, it's kind of like Nintendo games. They're just fun first games, the Ratchet and Clank ones are. They don't take themselves too seriously or anything like that. They just want you to play them and have a good time, and I... I appreciate that, you know? That's why I love a good story-heavy game. Everybody knows Final Fantasy series being one of my favorites, Kingdom Hearts being one of my favorites. But sometimes it's fun just to sit down and play, you know, a Mario game or, or a Ratchet and Clank game or something like that. Something that isn't going to take itself seriously at all, that you can just play for, for the fun of it, man. Just kind of relax, forget yourself for a while, and have a good time. And, of course, this one here, the PlayStation 2 ones in general, are uh, very nostalgic for me as well. Again, playing them as I was growing up, being some of my favorite games at my grandpa's house, just chilling, playing Ratchet and Clank. You know, you miss those things as you get older, and being able to do it again just uh, lets you live, relive a little piece of your childhood, and it feels nice, man. I guess that's why so many people are buying retro games right now, too. You know, during the coronavirus outbreak and all that, it... A lot of bad times, man. People needed just a little slice of their childhood again. So if you look at retro game prices, a lot of them have skyrocketed recently because so many people are just buying up old PlayStation 1, 2, Nintendo games, all that. Just something to make them feel good when the world's kind of trash. <laughs> a little bit of a time jump here. Nothing too crazy here in the beginning. We probably could have went to the Robo Shack and made this section a little bit uh, easier for us, but that's all right. Well, uh, we'll just take it slow. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong, but if I remember correctly, the Robo Shack is where we unlock the hover ability for Clank when we're wearing him a backpack like that. Yep. Thank you, lady. I appreciate the way they do tutorials in this game too, where it's not too pushy taking you out of it or anything like that. A couple of the games we've played recently had like short little cutscenes and things for the tutorial. And I hate I hate being taken out of the action to be told how to do something simple. Especially as a recurring player to a lot of these games, being constantly pulled out of it to do to be told how to turn the camera or something like that is just ridiculous. So like Man, I know, I know how to work the camera, I promise. <laughs> I'm not that inept, you know? Little workout bot here to yell at us real quick. That was the most pathetic display I have ever seen on that obstacle course. What do you mean? We finished the circuit, ma'am. Oh, yeah, but it was weak. Weak, weak! Then I was competing. I would devour courses like that for breakfast. <laughs> Bet that's not all. If it were up to me, you would drill, drill, drill for the rest of the day. But somehow you managed to impress that fool Captain Quark. Captain Quark knows about us? He certainly does. And worst of all, he wants me to give you a prize for that ridiculous performance. Cool, what is it? I'm supposed to give you a swing shot. So you can sway to and fro like little insects. All right, let's see it. Not so fast. Today, the two of you disgraced my obstacle course, so I am going to make you pay. But that prize is ours from the captain. That's not fair. Too bad, life's not fair. How rude. Making us pay a thousand bolts just for the slingshot? Sweet. I bet Captain Quark uses stuff like this all the time. Real men can swing without silly toys like that. The two of you make me sick. How? How? 
<laughs> I just want to know how that swinging works without one of these things, you know? Okay, what button do we use again? Maybe, okay, we got it selected, and then just circle, okay. Couldn't remember. It's been been a couple months since I've last played. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so the slingshot, of course, just lets us swing from place to place. Nothing, nothing too crazy. As Todd Howard says, it just works. Exactly, man. It just works. <laughs> all right, so unfortunately, though, that took pretty much all of our nuts and bolts here. So now we're going to have to regather a bunch of them before we can buy this new weapon power up. But we got the movement tech. I feel like that's, a, if anything, a little bit more important than whatever that weapon was that I... Can't even remember at the right now. Ah, oh, poor little doggy. All right, uh, triangle. We we'll use the bomb glove. Dead it. Take that, dick. You're trying to shoot us with bombs, man. Like Jesus. Seems like a little much, ain't it? My favorite part of all this is, like, we're still in a city, essentially, here, right? We're in a metropolis, and there's just random dudes trying to murder us? Like, wow. Hate to see what they would do to, you know, criminals in this town. <laughs> so, Nate, I know you like a bunch of Fallout and Elder Scrolls games and things like that, of course. We've talked about that both in person and on stream at this point. What would you say your favorite... Bethesda game is though. Like Fallout, Fallout 3, Fallout 4. What are your thoughts on that? Because I'll tell you, mine, it's a hard pick for sure, but maybe Fallout 3 for me? There's something about Fallout 3 that just always has a sweet spot in my heart. Although, don't get me wrong, I really like Fallout 4 and Elder Scrolls 2, but. Yeah, I, I, I think Fallout 3 kind of being my first major Bethesda title is kind of what, what did it for me, making it my favorite. Between Oblivion and Fallout 3. I'm assuming for the same reason, because they were your, your first Bethesda titles. And they're just such unique experiences, Bethesda titles are, you know? There's no other game series really like the stuff they make. I don't have the gun to shoot him up there. So I don't really know if I can kill the helicopter. I guess it doesn't really matter though. We can just kind of get around it easily enough. Some more ammunition behind the trees here. This is what I was saying with, I don't understand why you'd really ever buy ammunition. It's literally everywhere, man. Whoever designed these cities really, really did us a solid. I need to go back and play Oblivion at some point as well, Nate. I've never, like, I've played through the intro of it before, but I've never actually played through the game. And it's a bit of a travesty, really. Because, <laughs> again, Fallout 3, one of my favorite games of all time. Skyrim, huge fan of Skyrim, of course. But I've never really played much of Oblivion, only, only a little bit of it. And if anything, I'd say I'm doing a disservice to myself for that. Morrowind as well. For Morrowind, the problem is, you know, it's old. <laughs> it's very old. And it doesn't look amazing. The, the UI honestly bothers me more than the actual look of the game does. Because I play a lot of retro games, right? So I'm, I'm fine with games not looking amazing. But bad UI gets to me, man. Okay, we might actually want to go backwards real quick so that we can collect some health. Just had to watch these mines. I wasn't paying enough attention whenever that mine layer was around. But yeah, we, we were a little bit hurt. There should be... Oh, but then we got that helicopter there. All right, it's fine. We just have to be careful. Just don't take any hits. But yeah, Morrowind with its very unique setting is one that I really want to play. Like, really, really bad. I want to play and be able to enjoy. But again, with its its old U, old school UI and everything, it's just hard to, to get into it for me. 
Oblivion was the first that really caught you. Fallout 3 and Oblivion are both your favorite. Because they scratch different itches. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. Yes and no for me personally. Saw the info box. Remember, he knows Captain Quark. Hey, you're that robot guy, right? No, actually, I build robots. I myself am not a robot guy per se. <laughs> Nerd. I like him. So now that we've cleared that up, what can I do for you? Well, we saw your infobot announcement. You were with Captain Quark. We're trying to find Captain Quark. We thought you could help us. Your logic is commendable. However, I haven't seen Captain Quark since we shot that commercial. Say, do you run on standard XP-18 sister boards? Version 7.66. Back at ya. I may be able to help you out after all. How does a helipack upgrade sound? Upgrade? Nah, Very nice. 766, I could have the little guy up and flying in no time. Of course, uh, I'll just need my fee for service. Everybody wants paid. Man, can't save no money for anything around here, can we? Okay, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, wait. More when it was your first that you actually got a tribe. Didn't get to play it much because your neighbor hadn't just let you play it. Yeah, so what I was going to say is like Fallout 3 and Oblivion, for me personally, they scratch a lot of the same itches. A little bit different, of course. One being the whole post-apocalyptic shooter, the other being more fantasy exploration type of stuff, you know? So like certainly they scratch a slightly different itch, but still very similar itch. Um... And as far as like Morrowind versus Oblivion and whatnot goes, it's the setting for Morrowind that really makes me want to be able to get into it more. Because it's just so unlike Fallout, anything in the Fallout series or in the rest of the Outer Scrolls series. It's, you know, with all the, the giant fungi and the weird creatures and everything that inhabit Morrowind, it's just very different and I, I really like the look of it. But I've never actually gotten to play through it easy easy every time man i know how to play this game ah uh, the movement in this game is so good too i love it it makes me want to play super mario odyssey it, it plays nothing like odyssey but super mario odyssey has some incredible movement tech as well and I love just being able to roll around and, and jump and jump off the cap and things in Super Mario Odyssey. Bro, that's so much fun. It's a great time. Nate says Oblivion is really fun to have a fantasy adventure and a so-so story where Fallout 3 caught you with its story and heavy RP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, I, I totally understand what you mean by them scratching different itches. It's just, for me at least, a lot of the itches that it scratches end up being the same. Different, but the same as well, you know? I'm trying to let this dude kill the other dude, like, kill each other, but... Uh, without getting hit, we got hit. Trash. We're trash, we're bad gamers, and we should feel bad. <laughs> That's alright. Thankfully, dying in this game doesn't really do much. Just sets you back a little bit to whatever the last checkpoint is. Ugh. I almost jumped off the freaking cliff there. That would have been great. And you're making me want to play Bethesda Titan now. I just... I, <laughs> I'm already kind of missing Skyrim because I haven't had much time to play it. You're making me miss it so much more. Need to go back to Skyrim. Uh, I don't know if anybody out there watches YouTube rappers, like nerdcore rappers and whatnot. But one of the guys that I watch, his name's Dan Bull. He made a song called... Uh, I think it's Take Me to... Take Me to Oblivion Again, I think is what he called it. And it was all about, you know, wanting to go back to Oblivion and hoping that Skyrim ends up being really good and whatnot. I just have that song playing through my head now. Talking about Oblivion and Skyrim and all that and the unique settings and roleplay and all that. Just, uh, you're, making, you're making that itch appear, man. <laughs> Fallout setting was a big brain switch for you compared to Oblivion. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I love Fallout so much, because, I mean, other games have done post-apocalypse before, right? Like, it's not entirely unique in the fact that it's a post-apocalyptic game, but I feel like there are less of those than there are other fantasy settings, for one, and then also just the way Bethesda crafts their worlds with all of the little details that they add um, always end up being one of my favorites. Also, I guess that was a way to get infinite 
nuts and bolts there. I didn't really think of that. But that little generator was constantly spamming those little dog enemies, so we could have just kept killing them to get more more bolts. Uh, switch a lot of the scratch a lot of the same issues, but that setting switch is also something that you enjoy between the two. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, I'll have to go back and blame at some point. One of the things that I'm, I was doing more before I started this series, but I'm still doing every now and then, is uh, and, and mostly following the rules of in the Skyrim play that I'm doing right now, is the uh, challenge rules that I'm playing through. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I was trying, and like I said, off stream, I'm still trying to play through all of the named, like major Fallout and and. Uh, Elder Scrolls games with some more difficult rules. So I'm doing like uh, only being able to save when you're in a safe zone or a town or whatever or, or somewhere where you can rest is a good indicator of that in a lot of the games. And then, oh, I should have used that to get up top. Uh, and then doing less heals outside of like when in combat, like in town, I'm fine healing as much as I want. But in combat, only being able to use, like, one heal in a Fallout game. Or in the Elder Scrolls games, only being able to use magic to heal. Something that's real-time, not being able to go into the menu and and just get unlimited heals from that. Stuff like that. Just a little bit harder difficulty sort of stuff. Nothing insane. It's not like uh, many of True Nerd's YOLO runs that he does or anything like that. Where, you know, no heals throughout the entire game or anything. That's just insane, man. The world crafting Bethesda does is definitely amazing. That's one of the reasons you're hyped for Starfield. Bruh, I forgot all about Starfield until you just mentioned it, to be honest. Yeah. Starfield looks great, too, from the couple of teaser trailers that they've released. Definitely excited for that one, too. I'm a little bit worried on how their engine tech and everything is going to be able to pull it off. Because the creation engine is feeling more and more dated as time goes on, you know? Also, I see that we're coming up on our hour mark here. Yeah, we only got about a minute left before it's time for a quick break. And we have this whole little train sequence coming up. So I'm going to just do a quick pause of the game here, stretch out a little bit. Going to do a short ad break to get rid of pre-roll ads. And uh, so I can just, you know, stretch out and, and uh, not wear myself out too much here. Oh. But of course, for anybody who's subscribed, you'll be able to hear me talk right now. <laughs> or if your ad blocker is on point, then you'll be able to you'll be able to chill with the rest of us here. As the ad runs and I get my, my legs stretched, maybe get a little bit of a drink. Oh man. They asked, did they reveal what engine they were using? Because they had a new one in the making. As far as I know, they're not actually working on a new engine. As far as I know, they, they've been doing upgrades to the creation engine. Um, for instance, in Fallout 4, they... Uh, from Fallout 4 to Fallout 76, they did a lot of revamping for farther view distances, better weather effects, uh, being able to get more detail on screen at one time without you know, completely destroying the frame rate, things like that. So maybe they're just doing more upgrades to it. I mean, I imagine they would do at least some. But as far as I'm aware, they're not working on a, a brand new engine. Though I could be wrong, you know. I, I've i been wrong about that sort of thing before. And for all of Fallout 76's faults, I will say that it runs much better than Fallout 4 did even though it has more detail in the world. And the live weather effects are really cool. Like, being able to see storm systems moving around the land and stuff in Fallout 76 is really, really cool. Now, the game itself, obviously, is still very flawed, but they put a lot of work into the engine, and it pays off in a lot of ways. IMO. All right. Gonna take a quick drink, and then we'll get right back into it.
Yeah, Nate, I don't know. Maybe. Like I said, I've been wrong before. It's perfectly possible that they are working on a whole new engine. But from what I had seen, I, I was led to believe it was just a more upgrades on their existing engine. A lot of people were thinking that there may have been like the possibility for ladders, for instance, in, in Starfield to, to climb up and down ladders. And we're excited for some possible engine changings making making that possible. Because obviously in the Elder Scrolls and Fallout series, you don't really have ladders. Right? That's something that's always been missing from those titles. And, uh, but Todd had to like come out and say like, you know, some things are just in here kind of for the trailer. <laughs> so that led me to believe, again, that it's less about a new engine or any huge upgrades and more about just more incremental stuff. Kind of like what you saw between Skyrim and, and Fallout 4, for instance. And less of like what you saw between Fallout 4 and 76. Oh, I'm sure it'll still be a great game, man. Don't get me wrong. Still super hyped for it. But yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a whole new engine or anything. Bethesda seems a little set in their ways with the creation engine. I mean, they've essentially been using that forever. Clear back in, I believe Morrowind was the first one to use it, Gamebryo. And then they've just done constant upgrades to it ever since. Yeah, they've essentially been using the same engine their entire time making their big 3D games. <laughs> just kind of insane to think about, but hey, I guess it works for them, so whatever. I gotta watch for the mines on the ground. We ran into a lot of those, and then we just ran one in, or into one again. Like, we know they're there, why the hell do we keep hitting them? I may be a little blind, or dumb, or both. <laughs> What game, Nate, if you don't mind me asking, what uh, announced game, any announced game, are you most excited for? And we'll say, uh, Outer Scrolls 6, we'll say, is off the off the table, because that game's probably another 20 years away. <laughs> so while it has officially been announced, we'll say, you, you can't you can't pick that one. But would Starfield be your, your most hyped game, or is there something else that you're even more excited for? Dispense with the pleasantries, Lieutenant. My sources tell me you're behind schedule. We must prepare this planet to be harvested for our new world. Yes, sir. As you can see, everything is moving along as planned. I'm counting on you, Lieutenant. And as your former commander can tell you, I don't take disappointments well. Yes, sir. I won't fail. Drek is destroying yet another planet. Yeah, but if that's the kind of help he's getting, I don't think we have anything to worry about. You should not underestimate Chairman Drek. He is quite dangerous. We must find Captain Quark. Look, that lieutenant doesn't seem so tough. Let's take him out ourselves. Perhaps we can persuade the lieutenant to tell us where Drek is. <laughs> now you're talking. Is uh, Fable 4 officially announced? I haven't actually heard anything about it, I'll be honest. That's pretty cool, though. I really need to play the other ones then, if that's the case, because I don't want to be... You know, too far behind by the time it comes out. I'm already three games behind. <laughs> one of these days, I have all the tools that I need to fix at least one of the 360s. Um, it's a red ring of death, and I, I'm fairly certain that I'll be able to fix it. So, like, I have the tools that I need. I just need to uh, put in the time and effort to really try and do it, which I, I haven't done yet. And then, uh, yeah, I guess just download and start playing Fable 1 on PC at some point. Have you played the reboot, remaster, remake, whatever you want to call it, of Fable 1 that they did for PC, Nate? I'm curious what your opinion is on whether it's worth it to play that one or the the or the or original. Like, which one do you think would be better to play through? Because, I mean, they did some graphical and UI upgrades and whatnot, but I've heard a lot of people actually complaining about Fable 1 remaster, remake, whatever. So the official announcement announcement is out for Fable 4, just haven't got a release date yet. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah, I hope you end up liking it. And it should come to PC, since that's Microsoft's new business strategy. All games come to PC and consoles, so that should be good. All right, since we skipped uh, Outpost X11 here, we'll go ahead and hop straight into that one now. 
Yeah, that was the last one you got, actually. You'd get remastered because it has the extra content. Okay. Well, and I have both. So, like, it, that's not a problem. I was just curious which one I should download and play. If I do play it, maybe I'll end up streaming it. But I have, I have no idea when I'll have time. That was the only downside. <laughs> Trying to do as many of the PlayStation 2 Gauntlet stuff as I can. Because, I mean, even at the pace we're going, there's, what, roughly 1,800 games. We're doing three to four games a week. So, <laughs> we're talking, you know, many, many years already as is for the PlayStation 2 Gauntlet series. Of course, with all of your guys' support, I've been able to do a little bit more and more of it. So, I appreciate that. And if we continue to get more and more support, then we'll just continue to do more and more streaming. And uh, who knows, maybe someday we'll be full time. We'll be able to crank out that PlayStation 2 Gauntlet in no time, man. That'd be insane. Xbox Series and PC is the plan. It's been in the works for five years now. Holy crap, man. I just really hope it doesn't end up being one of those things where it's like they've been working on it forever and then it ends up being a huge letdown. Because that's been happening so much lately, I feel like. Skid McMarks. That man from the info box. Oh my god, it's Skid. You guys get a load of that epic <laughs> space battle I was in? We saw you screaming for help. Uh, that was like a war cry. My agent and I got ambushed on the way to hoverboard practice. Did he uh -huh. shut off the cry, sir? Yeah, he's okay. But I've had a little trouble getting back to my ship due to my sprained ankle. Oh, come on. If you can take out all the sand sharks, I just might have a spare hoverboard for you. We'd love to help you, Mr. McMarks, but Ratchet and I need to find Captain... One of your boards? Hmm. I've always wanted a decent hoverboard. Well... All right, you just keep that foot elevated. All right, so this is how we've gotten tricked to be Skid McMarks' uh, I don't know, personal bodyguard. <laughs> of course, getting the hoverboard will come in handy later. We'll be able to do some fun stuff with it, so. We'll do it, I guess. I don't remember what the seven down in the right corners were. Oh, those are the... Yeah, those things there. The spawners or whatever. The nests, maybe? Maybe the... And then, of course, the, the number on the left is the total number of... I think they called them sand sharks, right? So we just gotta murder all these fools. Shouldn't be hard. We'll get a bunch of nuts and bolts in the meantime. It's crazy how you just get paid for, for killing random monsters. And it's almost like the monsters themselves just kind of explode into money. Which is insane, you know? <laughs> it's like every RPG ever is like, why is this random creature in the forest just carrying around a bunch of gold in its pocket? It makes no sense, but hey, we'll take it. Money is money, doesn't matter where it comes from. <laughs> For Fable Nate, as far as you know, is it being created by Lionhead? That's who created the other ones, right? Lionhead Studios? You don't think so. Playground Studio is the one working on it. And from leaked art, it looks to be they're keeping it in style. Main question, are they continuing the story or doing a reboot? And if they're going to be a system similar to 2 or 3 or a whole new one. So wait, was like 1 way different from 2 and 3 then? Since you didn't include that that game in the, uh, the list there? Lionhead is actually closed now. You know what, I think I maybe did hear something about that at one point or another. It's too bad. They did other things other than just Fable, right? I seem to remember seeing their their studio come up for other things. They did like some god games or something back in the day before, before Fable. Man, I'll tell you, I remember being... I, I was pretty young, I don't remember exactly how old. But I remember watching E3 on my computer way back in the day and just thinking that Fable 2 or 3, they were talking about how the world kind of reacts to what you do and how, how you know, you age as time progresses and stuff like that and just thinking it sounded like the coolest thing ever and being super hyped to play it, but I didn't have an Xbox was it an Xbox 360, right? Because that's what Fable 2 came out on. 
Or did Fable 2 come out on the original Xbox as well? Regardless, either my original Xbox had broken, it was for that, or it was a Xbox 360 game and I didn't have a 360. But either way, I didn't have the, the console needed to play it and then never ended up getting around to playing it. Even though I was super hyped for it. One and two are similar, whereas they changed the leveling system, changed, and all changed in three. Oh shit, okay. They did other stuff, it's kinda on par for the head of Lionhead. He has a new company now, don't know name. Yeah, uh, shoot, what's his name? Uh, I know his name, but I can't remember it. But yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of, a couple of YouTubers that I watch like to rag on him a lot. <laughs> Cause he kinda always over promises on things and then never fully delivers. Fable 2 was 360, okay, yeah. So it was probably Fable 2, it may have been Fable 3. Either way, I, I didn't have a 360 and never got the chance to play it, even though it looked really good. Oh, shoot. I thought we had the other weapon equipped. Crap. Ah, uh, and that put us clear back. We gotta kill them all again. Bruh. Terrible. I thought we had the bombs equipped, so I was trying to use the bombs. And <laughs> we ended up having the stupid gun equipped. Trash. That's all right. We'll get it this time. He overestimates the capability of the systems that he's working on. Yeah, I mean, I can see that. <laughs> Can't believe I don't remember his name. That's gonna bug me. Is it, so like, I think it, Personally, I think it's less about him overestimating the capability of the systems that he's working with, though, and more just about him, like I said, kind of over-promising and under-delivering. Because, if I remember correctly, their studio originally did stuff for PC, right? Which, I mean, yeah, even PC has its limits, but it doesn't have as many limits as console does. And even then, he, he was well known for for under delivering under delivering on his uh, projects with some of his god games. He's the one that worked on like black, black and white, or or whatever it was called. It's kind of bothered me that I can't remember his name. For some reason, the only name coming to mind is Jonathan Blow, and that's not it at all. That's the, what he do, Braid, I think. Jonathan Blow. P Peter, Peter Molyneux. I think that's it. I think it was Peter Molyneux. I, I think he's the one that heads a uh, line head. That sounds right to me. I think it's uh, Guru Larry is the guy that I watch on YouTube that's always <laughs> ragging on him. <laughs> cool YouTube channel, though. If you like, uh, you know, YouTube channels about games and different controversies and, and games and things like that. Oh, God. Okay, we're gonna go up here. I think there's a health pack up here. Right? Wasn't there a health pack up here somewhere? Yes. Thank the Lord, because we are almost dead. Okay. Let's switch back to the bombs, too, because I keep trying to use the bombs and then just dying. Can we reach? Come on. I'm trying to kill the flowering dude that's spawning them all. Last one. There we go. There we go. You, yeah, man. Thanks, Skid. Oh, brand new Z3000. You can't even buy these. Well, I got a bail. Catch you dudes at the hoverboard races. You've just acquired a Gadgetron Z3000 hoverboard. You Hell yeah. New hoverboard at the racetrack in Blackwater City on Planet Wilgon. Do we even know how to get there yet? Or maybe by unlocking that we'll get the coordinates to that planet. I don't remember. This is roughly how far I got whenever I played the game for the Just One Mother Level podcast. Maybe a tiny bit farther, but wasn't much farther, at least. So from here on out, I'm, I'm pretty much in new territory. <laughs> All 
Or no, I, I actually, I played a little bit more of the game after that, now that I think about it. Because I was going to do a series playing it, and then, uh, things happened, I didn't get to end up finishing it, sadly. So I played a little bit farther, but it wasn't a whole lot farther than where we're at now. Okay, we have all the weapons. Nothing new to buy. But there should still be one more thing that we want to do here, right? A few missions. Yeah, we got to find his agent still. I think his agent is the one that actually gets us into one of the races once we find him. And he'll give us the coordinates and everything on how to get there, I think. Maybe. I could be talking out of my ass. That's that's a possibility, too. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can do anything over here. I mean, we could jump up on there, right? Maybe... Maybe that'll do something? Or no, that's just a hole. <laughs> Never mind. We can't jump on there because there's nothing to jump on. It's not a platform. Feels so good to be able to hover and do the long jumps and everything now. Let's go back to the blaster. Get these guys at range. Don't have to deal with their, their fire and their missiles and all that crap. Just outrange them. Uh, we could use that health, though. That'd be nice. Speaking of... Hello. Dead. Dead. And... I don't think we can shoot that far, though, yeah. Even we have our range limits, okay? Uh, hit him. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Well, with our 2,700 bolts now, hopefully we'll be able to buy whatever the next weapon ends up being. Whenever we uh, get to the next planet. Sand Shark's out the ass here, man. And they are giving me a surprisingly hard time. Uh, hello? Hit the dude, please. Running out of ammo. We'll just have to switch to maybe the bomb glove again or something. Bomb glove is much more powerful anyways. It just has less range, obviously. That's the downside to it. We have the Pyrocitter as well. We could be using that, but... Eh. It's never one of my favorite weapons. It's decent, but... I don't know, never cared for it as much as I did the the bomb glove and whatnot. Uh, slingshot, actually, we can go ahead and go over there. This is why we went to that other planet first, so that we would have these abilities to explore these areas that we wouldn't be able to otherwise. I mean, we could have always come back, right? It's pretty open in that sense, the game. But it's nice to be able to just do it all in one go. There's some crazy speedruns of Ratchet and Clank and whatnot, too. I've watched a couple, like, speedrun history-style videos talking about all the discoveries that were made, all the out-of-bounds tricks and things that they've discovered to be able to do a lot of this stuff a lot faster. It's insane what people, given enough time and, and effort, will find in games like this. Oh, wait. I actually want to... I actually want to jump back. Because I missed the boxes. We got to get all the nuts and bolts, man. Can't miss none of this shit. Then, uh, okay. I was a little scared. I thought maybe we were standing a bit too close, but we ended up being okay. That's all right. Is there a, another thingy? There is, just out of view. And then... Uh, no, please. We don't want none of that smoke. Alright. And so how's everybody been doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well today. Thankfully. I haven't been sleeping too well the past couple of nights, so that sucks. But but it could be a lot worse too, you know? It's my day off, so at least, other than streaming, it's not like I'm doing anything too strenuous. Just having a nice, relaxful day. Other than some house chores, just kind of get a chill. Oh, we got the hacking tool, right? That's what this is, I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, the trespasser. Catch you up on laundry and such. Yep. Yep. That's why I was saying I gotta I gotta do a little bit of the 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 chores myself. Thankfully nothing too too crazy. I just wanna get some dishes done today and probably run the vacuum or robot vacuum. Could probably use a bit of a mop too, to be honest. It's been a little while since I've mopped. Laundry for me has always been one of those chores I don't really mind doing. Cause it's so, in my opinion at least, it's so like relatively simple, right? You just kind of put the laundry in and then take it out later. <laughs> but in 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 people's defense, though, that that hate laundry, I'm one of those people that don't really see the point in folding clothes or anything either, right? Like if it weren't for my girlfriend, Mr. Noodle, I would probably just take all of my clothes and either throw them in a pile or just separate them by like pants, shirts, underwear, and throw them on drawers. Like, <laughs> cause I just, I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me, that sort of stuff. Got to get the robot mop. You know, you say that, but I was actually joking with Mr. Noodle the other day and I told her, like, I, I kind of can't wait for our robot vacuum to break now because I want to upgrade already. <laughs> I want to upgrade to a robot mop and vacuum. Uh, die, please. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how well, good of a job the robot uh, vacuums, or I'm sorry, the mops do. But, man, if it could just do all of it for me, that would be excellent. Uh, I didn't mean to hit that. Sorry. Worked out in the end. Something throwing bombs at me? No, it must have just been that dude blowing up still. Big explosions for one dude. Ooh. Don't fall. Least favorite chore, though, for sure? Dishes, man. Doing the dishes suck. That's the first, like, home appliance I got to help with house chores other than like a vacuum or something of course you know the stuff everybody has is a dishwasher because yeah i i to be honest it is usually mr noodle that ended up doing the dishes like 80 percent of the time or something like that credit where credit's due but i've seen how much time she had to spend doing dishes and then anytime i ended up having to do them i just hated doing it so i was like you know what screw it i'm just gonna buy a dishwasher and we can throw 90 percent of the dishes in here and just have it deal with it so that I don't anymore. <laughs> Despise it. It just takes so much time to clean them and clean them right. And time is something that all of us don't have enough of, you know? Uh, Try not to stop right in front of his flame, maybe. Same, says Nate. Yeah, yeah, dishes suck, man. I'll do laundry any day of the week, you know, but ask me to do dishes and I'm just going to regret it. Just just the dread of having to stand there for an hour just wiping off dishes. <laughs> I mean, like, I started setting up, like, my phone so I could watch, you know, a YouTube video or a Twitch stream or something like that. I did that for a little while and it helped. At least I had something to do while doing the dishes. But even then, you know... It's just not a fun time. But it is what it is, I suppose. And hey, like I said, I got a dishwasher now, so it's not all that bad. It helps a ton. As much as I love my robot vacuums, that's definitely like the first <laughs> appliance I would suggest to anyone. If they're looking for something to help them with chores around the house, man, get yourself a dishwasher. We just got one of those countertop ones is all we got. And like it hardly even fits on our counter because we have some little counter space and then our uh, cabinets are right above the counters. 
Do you need medical attention, sir? Don't be so literal, son. The problem is I'm stranded on this backwater planet and my star client is nowhere to be found. Hey, we saw you on that info bot. You're Skid's agent. Was Skid's agent. I haven't seen him since our ship crashed. And an agent without a client is like a flea without a dog. Say, you look like an athletic kid. If you can bring back the championship prize from the hoverboard races in Blackwater City, I'll make you my next star. We have no time for trivial matters, sir. Hmm. I could be the next Skid McMarks. Here we go. So now we got to bring the prize from the hoverboard races. Still not sure if he told us how to get there or not, but I mean, we'll figure that out eventually. Sooner or later. You're going to try to get a dishwasher around tax time? Yeah. Would highly suggest it. I forget the exact name. I think ours was a Black & Decker, if I remember correctly. And, like I said, highly worth it, in my opinion. We ordered it from Amazon with one of the, like, uh, pay-over-time options. And, uh, definitely worth it, in my opinion. Relatively easy to set up, too. You basically just had to put it somewhere close to the sink. It came with a little attachment so that you can hook it right up to the faucet. And a quick connect-disconnect hose so that you can easily connect it and disconnect it whenever you know you're using it or, or not using it the only downside is you can't really use the sink all that well whenever it's on uh, if you have a hose attached to your sink you can still use that part of it but you can't use the actual tap anymore which is a bit of a pain but it's not the end of the world Another quick cutscene, it looks like. Yes, quite lovely. That should just about do it. Commander, we are finished with this world. Commence towing our planet to its next destination. Lieutenant! Yes, sir. You have fulfilled your tree quota. Barely. We are ready to return to base. Not so fast, Lieutenant. Just because we don't need any more trees doesn't mean they should have them. Destroy everything. <laughs> Kind of rude. Don't know why he just wants to completely destroy the planet. For anybody who hasn't seen the movie, it's essentially a retelling of the story in this game. It is, like, way different than the than this game, but it follows the same story beats, right? Trespasser. We can break in now. Okay, so... Fairly simple here. Just gotta spin these guys around. And then this guy here. Too easy. Whoever designed the security for these things, they should really start looking for a new job. It's obvious they aren't very good at this. <laughs> I don't think security was their, was their calling in life. Oh, just barely made it. Just me, or was that rock? Yeah. <laughs> the LOD on that rock doesn't quite line up right. So it's like sinking as we get closer to it. That looks weird. That looks really weird. <laughs> it reminds me of like old cartoons and anime and stuff like that, where you could always tell what was going to be... Like, uh... What was going to be interacted with by the characters in the show because they always look different than all of the other stuff in the scene. They'd be like a, a brighter shade or whatever. That's what that rock reminds me of. Company just chose the lowest bidder, yeah. <laughs> and too easy. Not sure why all these random floating platforms are connected to, you know, a random bolt just kind of chilling here, but hey, it works in our favor, so we'll take it. Ooh, almost overshot that one. That would have been bad. That should open the 
Oh no, okay, that's giving us these thingies. I mean, that slingshot can go far. Could you imagine if the one in like Legend of Zelda went that far or something? Oh, neat. Um, I feel like we've used the swing shot and the trespasser most recently, not the bomb glove, but whatever, I guess. All right, so we can put this here and then you go there, right? Yeah, and then this guy goes, wait, where's the last? Oh, I didn't even see it, but it worked out, so we'll take it. <laughs> I'm not even sure where that last laser was actually supposed to go, but it opened the door. I want to see Clank fight that guy now by himself. You sure showed him. I suppose I did. <laughs> Is your current occupation leaving a rotten taste in your mouth? Then you need to know about BTS, Blog Tactical Research Station. Hi, I'm Supreme Executive Chairman Drek, and we here at BTS are seeking motivated individuals to fill positions in these exciting careers. Grind Boot Tester, Warhead Assembly Technician, Mutant Animal Husbandry, Robot Repair Man, Suck Cannon Test Dummy, and Administrative Assistant. So call BTS. Build our weapons while you build your future. I'm calling BTS today. I don't know about y'all, but I want a job as a mutant animal husbandry expert now. Let's go get some. No, we must continue our search for Captain Quark. You're absolutely right. I am? Sure, we need to find Quark. Although when we find him, wouldn't it be nice to be able to tell him where Chairman Drek is? I suppose. Well, we go to the space station and talk to the scientists. They work for Drek, so they're bound to know where he is. I am unsure about your logic. Ah, uh, you think too much. Come on, let's go. Yeah, Clank. Jeez, man. Why would you think about our safety or, or, or the most logical order of operations here? When we can just go get some cool-ass guns. We all know that's all that really matters. Alright, so this is... Are we... Yeah, we're back at the beginning now. So this is all we really needed to come here for, I believe. But in most of these planets, there's either sub-objectives or at least other things to find. So if we go to view missions... Yeah, we can also explore the mills here. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way while we're here. No reason to skip it. Was there a... Yeah, there was. Can we buy a new weapon here? We can. The Glove of Doom. Okay, well, we can't afford it, but it's available now. Summon a horde of exploding buddies. Very nice. The farther you get into this game, the wackier the weapons get, and I love it, man. Is it... I can't remember if it's this game or if it's one of the later ones where you get the one that just turns people into sheep. <laughs> love that one, too. Okay, uh, don't know which way we're supposed to go, so we'll just go this way first. We can always come back around the other direction later. This looks like it may have been the right way, question mark. Ooh, maybe not actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 it looks like we need to go the other way first. Just destroy some tree choppers, no problem. Very easy to deal with. Couple hits with a trusty wrench and they're just falling left and right, man. You would think them with the giant axes would be a bigger threat than, a, a, what are we, wombats? What, what are we got called again? I can't remember what our species is, but. <laughs> Robots with giant axes versus one little dude with a wrench. I don't know, man. Looks like the wrench is getting the upper hand here. Love that the wrench is the main weapon. Yeah, man. And the utility of it, too. It was just really smart, you know? Because you can do the, the thing where you grab onto a nut and bolt and spin it around. 
to unlock new areas with it. You can use it as a throwable weapon, like a boomerang. Like, it's just a, it's a very useful item to use as a weapon as well. Really smart on the game designer side, I feel like. See, and then you get fun little secrets like this, you know? It doesn't really matter. This wasn't unnecessary, or this wasn't necessary to unlock, but... Extra little nuts and bolts, it just feels good to collect. Very nice. I love the satisfying sound design of this game, too. Like, with every nut and bolt that you collect, just the, the wonderful clanking. The screen shake as things blow up, like... The nice satisfying boom, it's just very good. Everything about these games, just very, very good. Ooh, I wonder if we could kill that thing, that's... That saw, random saw blade thing that almost hit us. Okay, well. Just ran right into an explosive... Ba uh, not barrel. Box. Good job, boss. Wrenches are wonderful all-purpose tools. For sure, man. You can use it as a wrench. You can use it as a hammer. You can, you can use it as a boomerang, apparently. I've never tried that one in real life, but... I mean, hey, Ratchet and Clank wouldn't lead us wrong, right? I'm sure it's a wonderful boomerang. Somebody try it out. Let me know how it goes. Just uh, don't throw it at anything breakable or alive. <laughs> and just in case it does decide to come back, be careful, man. Don't let it hit you. Ow. Gunner, dude. What'd you go and do that for? I just wanted to be your friends, but then you had to go and shoot me. You had to add the alive bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very important. Don't throw it at anything alive. <laughs> maybe, like, find a large open field. Maybe, maybe, maybe try it there and see if it works as a good boomerang, you know? Somewhere with nothing but grass to hurt. We're, we're vegetarian wrench throwers here, right? We only throw wrenches at things that a vegetarian would eat. So, a block of tofu? Go for it, man. <laughs> a nice tofu statue of a, a, a robot? Throw it at it, man. Smack it as hard as you can, see what happens. Or, if you want to be extra with it, forgo the tofu and get you some, like, Beyond Meat or something, right? A nice meat substitute. <laughs> There's a cannibal tofu. I've heard of that, man. The, the like, human flesh-flavored tofu or whatever. Meant to mimic what human meat would, would be like to eat. It's weird. For the cannibal who doesn't quite want to be a cannibal, I guess. I don't <laughs> I don't really understand it, but it is indeed a thing. You are right about that. And I admit I would try it. <laughs> like my curiosity would get the best of me, and I, I eventually would try it out. It's made for scientific research PR or something. I mean that makes more sense than a cannibal just being like, you know what? I'm tired of eating people. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't I don't imagine there's very many cannibals out there thinking, you know what we need? We need to just get together a research and development team and uh, make a nice meat replacement for us and all of our cannibal friends. I mean, I could be wrong. There could be a thriving community of them out there, but for some reason, I, I feel like there's probably... Uh, not like a, a cannibal convention, especially a cannibal tofu convention. <laughs> but you gotta admit though, like if you're a meat eater, I feel like, at least for me, like I said, my curiosity would get the best of me. If somebody put it on a plate in front of me, I would probably try it. Because I would want to know, you know? 
Like, what do I taste like? Do I taste good? Do I taste like trash? I don't know. But now I want to know. Ah, you're trash. Stupid gun guy. What's this guy do? I'll lower us another platform. Okay. Is there something cool on the platform for us? It looks empty. Okay, well, that doesn't work. Can't hover from under the platform. Oh, okay, we just need this to be able to make it on that big of a jump, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Big axe guy. Uh, don't blow yourself up, Ratchet. Oh, I forgot we had the Glove of Doom, man. We could have used that. Here, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the Glove of Doom for anybody who hasn't seen it before. Wait, why is it not... Why is it not equipped? Gadgets. Oh, that's right. We didn't buy it yet. We didn't end up getting enough... Uh, we didn't have enough things to buy it. That's right. It's weird that it's giving us ammo for it before we even purchased it, but man, whatever, I guess. Just means we'll have more once we do get it. Which, whenever we get back around to the beginning, we'll have enough for it now. It was 7,000, I believe. We have 9,000, so... More than enough. A couple bombs is all you really need, though, you know? Who needs AI robot bombs when you can just... Throw a bunch of highly explosive... Grenades? They're not really grenades, are they? Just highly explosive balls of doom. Third secrets. A little bit of health. We'll definitely take that. We're pretty low. Oh no, we're doing better than I expected, but better than I thought. But still, we needed one. We'll take it. Cool. Uh, okay, this way. I was a little lost for a second. Nope. Nope. What? The saw guy? Really? Like the easiest enemies, too. How the hell did we get hit by one of them? Total noobs, man, I swear. Couple shooty McShooty faces. That hit us twice. Oh, Lord Almighty. I am, like, angry at myself right now for taking that many hits, man. What kind of trash? Okay, there's some health over there. One down. Two down. And last dude down. I think that was all of them, right? We should be good now. Just don't get blown up by one of those things. What is this? Oh, is that the Sakamatron or whatever the hell it's called? Gadgetron. Suck cannon. Nice. And suck up enemies and shoot them back out as missiles. It's amazing. Completely ridiculous. Makes absolutely no sense, but perfect at the same time. Come on, give us some small guys we can suck up. Yes. More. I want more. Oh man, I thought that thing was going to murder us. Got right in the way as we were trying to jump <laughs> across. I hear stuff, but I don't see stuff. Oh, was that? Okay, I guess, we, I guess we're done. Yeah, that was exploring the mill. Alright, well that was it for it then. Wow, I thought there was more to the level to be honest. Okay, well, we can get by the Glove of Doom now. I kind of wish I could show it to you guys. Because it's another really cool weapon summons a bunch of little dudes that run around and just blow up on contact with stuff a lot of fun but i think that's all the time we have for ratchet and clank sadly i gonna go ahead and drop a save real quick and then we're going to switch on over to uh lord of the rings the third age gonna get a hour and a half two hours of that in before we get off for the night but that's been a lot of fun man 
the PS2 Gauntlet is going strong. For anybody that has any questions about it, there's a post that should have just popped up on uh, the Twitch chat there. There's a, a post on my blog a little bit about what it is exactly, as well as a list of games that I have and that I've played and things like that. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you guys for joining me for Ratchet and Clank. We're going to take a short break, and then we will come back with Lord of the Rings, The Third Age.